fade out. <laughs> fade in. Fade in. Uh, hey, everybody, welcome to LA Comic Con. My name is Chris Gore from Film Threat, and I'm happy that you're all here. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for being here, your attendance here, and for those watching on YouTube. And I also want to thank the organizers of LA Comic Con for allowing us to put this panel on along with many others. Today, we're going to be discussing something that I think uh, is important to a lot of us that have been around fandom for a long time. The title of this panel is The Death of the Modern Franchise, and we're going to discuss it all. Before we get into it, I'm going to allow my panelists, starting with my colleague here from Film Threat Allen, to introduce themselves, plug their, plug their channels or, or websites, and then we're going to get right to the discussion. Let's start with you, Alan, yes. and we'll go down. I'm Alan Ng. I'm the editor-in-chief of Film Threat. I also co-host the Film Threat uh, live cast, YouTube channel on, yeah, YouTube channel on YouTube. Uh, so be sure to smash that like button and get us to 100,000 subscribers. You already did, no? We did! Oh my god! <laughs> I think we're trying to get to 169. 169. Yeah. Uh, if you know Alan, you know. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name's Tom. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hot down there, buddy. Thanks. First time. What? Like, yeah. Just hold it. Okay, so apparently this thing is really hot. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, name's Dante. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can follow me on uh, Verbal Riot. I'm actually at yeah, the show point. Uh, the channel's going through some reconstruction right now, but there's still some videos up you can check out. Uh, got in trouble with YouTube a few times uh, for my content, so uh, I have to play nice now. <laughs> but uh, anyway, glad you guys are here. Hello, my name is Gary Beekler from the Nerd Riot. Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ramesh Shire, I'm a director of commercials, 300 commercials, done some music videos, hopefully a feature next year. But more importantly, I'm a fanboy of all these guys. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Holly Latino Slant. What's up, everybody? Yo, let's do this. <laughs> That's all I got. I was ready to talk. <laughs> what about it? Uh, let me, let me about that. That. Let's talk about that mistletoe in your hat. I got a mistletoe in my hat. On my hat. I, t I took off the, the red feather. This is a, you know, this is a very bad idea. So he can kiss himself in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, I just want to say before we can start talking about the, the, the uh, subject of this panel, that I would like to point out that this is might be one of the most diverse panels uh, up here. I know the, the, the word diverse can be a triggering word for some people. I'll just say I'm, I'm proud of the diversity of this panel. When I say diversity, I mean diversity of opinions. And um, I guess I guess the end of that Star Wars girl would 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 make it better for her, but she can't find parking. So we're gonna we're gonna have her join us as soon as possible. Um, but also, I don't think there's necessarily a need to point that out. I'm just pointing it out because some people care about that stuff. Uh, but I care about um, ideas and being able to have an open and honest conversation without threat that I'm going to get canceled because I think a certain way or I have a certain opinion. Recently, I expressed some opinions on social media that um, I'm sad to say that longtime friends said uh, they, they couldn't associate with me because I was, well, if you follow me on social media, you know, I'm a jackass, and I say <laughs> stupid things, mainly to try to be funny. But um, but uh, it's it's concerning to me to see the divide, the divide mainly coming from that we cannot openly discuss ideas, even the concept of this panel. And I'd like to throw it out and have um, everyone respond to um, the question that this panel asks, are our franchises dying? And feel free to give specific examples We'll go down the line, and let's start with Polly, and then we'll come back this way. So, are franchises dying? If so, what ones, and why? And and we'll bullet you know, go down the line with everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now an example. I mean, which like it, it, it should be like which ones aren't yeah. dead? Godzilla. 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 <laughs> and I was thinking about this. Uh, 
Brett, what are franchises? These are supposed to be movies that bring us together. Harry Potter, uh, you know, brings us together. Godzilla, Star Wars used to do that. Uh, Lord of the Rings. When I say us, just, it is, it is just lovers of, uh, of those lords. I mean, that's it, you know? And it, it, it's just, to me, I'm just in, in, in shock. Uh, you go down the line, I, I think the latest one was the Doctor Who. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, did, I just saw that one scene and was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to see it. I, 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 we were very happy that we got to see Godzilla the other night to kind of boost our spirits. I mean, I got to identify with the kamikaze pilot. No spoilers. Sorry, guys. But he gets to redeem himself. Uh, incredible human story as well as an incredible monster story. Cool. Yeah, I think franchises at one point were humanistic stories. I think Die Hard, right? A guy who's afraid to fly who has to get on the top of Nakatomi Plaza, uh, a human character. And I think, though, as you said, Godzilla, I think there's hope because I think Godzilla is a game changer. And we can talk more about that. But, you know, I'll lay the ground, it lays the groundwork for maybe a 60s style James Bond, maybe some other ideas of, of, Drawn from the past as well as the present. Okay. Um, yes, uh, franchises are dying. They're dying. We, there's a lot of reasons they're dying. Uh, it's corporatism, corporatism coming in and trying to commodify art, uh, turning art into widgets. Uh, and in that, they are risk averse and they brought in a lot of the message. And the message is the foundation of the failure for everything that we have loved for so long that's brought us together, no matter what we believe. I have never been against anybody's ideas. I'm against the idea of being against people's ideas. Mm. And when you're starting to weaponize that and weaponize fandom, uh, weaponize the things we love, we we weaponize our American mythology, our international mythology, our stories that bring us together. Uh, Godzilla minus one is a great example of something everybody Absolutely everybody else. That's why we do this. We keep looking for that feeling. Uh, today, I just finished watching Doctor Who, which is the most dead franchise of them all, which did something that's incredible. It went back in its own past, retconned it for a message, for the message. Instead of just expanding on it, they had to change it. They felt like they had to change it because they, the owners of the franchise, felt like there was something wrong with it. In turn, that must mean there's something wrong with us because we're the ones who kept it around. We're the ones who loved it and cultivated it and shepherded in new fans. And that's broken now, thanks to the corporations, thanks to uh, the modern access media. And that's why a lot of you, that's why I went to YouTube and went to other places. We just talk to fans, because that's the back I, I have your back. I have the fans back, no matter what you believe. You can, I don't care if you like uh, you know, The Last Jedi. I don't really care, as long as you don't mind that I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself. Just a quick note, Chris. Maybe we don't hit hit the tables because that was like really wrong. Don't hit the table. Don't hit the table. <laughs> I don't, if, if, we're, if you don't care about sound recording, I don't care. I'm just going to get my hand cut me at this point. I just, right. <laughs> okay, Dante, let's hear from you. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, yeah, the American franchise. And, and I say American because I feel like uh, where we're getting it wrong. Places like Japan are getting it right. Places like Korea are getting it right. So, especially South Korea. Yeah. And, <laughs> look, we, we, <laughs> look, we've been into all these reasons. Let's not get political. <laughs> hey, hey. No, uh, look, look, we've been into all these reasons to ask why the American uh, franchise is failing. We all know why, though. It, 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 like, like Gary said, it's corporatism. It's literally, basically, just them not caring about what we think. Right, they have their group thing. They, they they have their 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 writers rooms, and they can care less what we think or what we like. Uh, so therefore, uh, their properties are dying, and we're going to let it die, and we're going to keep letting it die until they learn a lesson. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I posted my review of the Marvels. And, uh, and overnight, uh, I became TikTok famous without ever producing a video. Shelly <laughs> <laughs> Sudaconic knows who I am now. Um, but the thing is, so I, I only preface that by saying, 
to make myself feel better, I went to the uh, LA premiere of Wish. And um, and I swear I hated that movie. And, and it, this is the weird thing about it. I, walking into seeing Wish, I knew I might have problems with it. But the last thing I thought I would have a problem with was the actual animation of Wish. Uh, because I was watching it and I thought to myself, this is such a massive step backwards for the Walt Disney Company. But for, for Walt Disney, who created the animated feature, uh, who, who is the father of the animation, of full feature animation, uh, and, the, and this movie was so profoundly bad that you wonder, uh, the, his, Walt Disney's entire legacy was just gone in a single movie. And, uh, and I started talking about it. And uh, the last thing I thought, I, I mean, look, the, the, the weird thing is I never even talked about the story or the characters or anything. Uh, it, you know, is, is the modern franchise did? Yeah, I mean, Disney can't even get it right. And there's no, there's no sign that they are going to get it right or back to the way it was before, anytime soon. Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go, go. 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 <laughs> First of all, I just want to thank all, all of you for being here. I know I meant, I noticed I mentioned at the top that the panel was diverse and, and whatnot. I also want to point out that the audience here is very diverse as well. And we're all united by the fact that we all really care about these franchises. Many of these uh, franchises that are beloved among us, everything from Harry Potter to Star Trek to Doctor Who, Star Wars, um, a lot of us have been fans of that for decades. And so, um, and we're all united by our love of fandom. That is something we all have in common, especially everyone in this room. I want to uh, pivot now to what are the reasons that modern franchises are dying? What is, what is the, is, is there some commonality in the problems? I'll kick it off a little by um, jumping off something that Gary said earlier, corporatism. Um, I've had a kind of a weird career where I've actually worked for corporations I started Film Threat out of high school 600 years ago. And um, not 600 years, that was also a joke. Um, <laughs> please clap. Please clap. <laughs> uh, but, no, but like, all I'm saying is that um, I've been covering this stuff for quite some time. And the one thing I've noticed is that corporations kill creativity. In every corporate structure that is highly regulated or cares about things like box ticking or cares about managing artists in a way that doesn't serve the story or the audience or keep those things in mind first above all else rather than like um i mean tim burton famously walked away from doing a third batman movie because he was tired of dealing with mcdonald's mcdonald's was furious over the fact that they did happy meals for batman returns which they considered a violent movie not for children that's just one of the things that directors and filmmakers and creatives has, have to contend with is, is this property viable enough for action figures, toys? Does it check every box so everyone can identify with the story? Does it, does it fulfill certain corporate goals and whatnot? And um, I find that incredibly limiting for creatives. I think it's impacted the process in a horrible way. And one thing, one thing I will end with, and I want to pass it up to, so everybody can address this issue, is the whole point of storytelling, whether it's in a novel or a comic book or a movie, a piece of fiction, a television series, whatever, it's all about empathy. We empathize with someone who doesn't look like us. How many stories have we seen where the lead character is an animal, where the lead character doesn't is a different uh, gender? Uh, to me, Ripley, the smartest person in Alien, and I would also say Aliens, I identified with her because she was the smartest one. She was the one that at every turn, kind of, she was a little bit ahead of the game. You know, let's not break, let's not break protocol and bring Cain into the infirmary, into the ship. It's breaking protocol. In any case, I could go on and on, but all of us have, in some form of fiction, identified with someone that doesn't look like us. I think it is small-minded to think you can only identify with someone who looks like you. I think that's short-sighted. All of us saw the, um, the Godzilla movie and loved it, and we could identify with those characters because it was a human story. So I think the narrative that you can only identify with someone who looks like you is stupid, and we need to push back against that because the only opportunity we have to learn is to step into someone else's shoes. There she is. And there she is. Yeah. 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 Come on.
to just discuss uh, this topic, but the question for everyone on the panel is, um, we all agree that modern, um, you know, modern franchises are dying. Most of them are dying. What are the reasons for it? And uh, um, Alan, we'll start with you. Sure. We'll just go all the way down, uh, back that way. Um, what are the reasons the franchises are, that we're seeing franchises die before our eyes? And I would say there's evidence for this, because look at the box office, look at the dwindling ratings, Look at the contraction of the industry almost in half. Okay, let us answer the question. Uh, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Um, yeah, let me, uh, I'll, I'll preface it this way. Uh, why do we like Godzilla minus one? Why do we like RRR? Why do we like foreign movies over American movies? The biggest thing that, the, the thing that foreign movies don't have that American movies have uh, is, this, is the fact that they're not hung up on American cultural politics. And this, this is the thing that's ruining our storytelling, American storytelling, is that uh, there, there's an agenda that we have to follow. There are boxes we have to check, like you mentioned. And, and, and what's happening is our stories are not our stories anymore. Our stories have to change to fit a mold that will offend a very small segment of this population. And uh, I would much rather us tell the stories that are in our hearts. And, and I, I, I firmly believe that if you tell a story cast the way you want to test it. Diversity will find you. you. You will not have to force it here. And so why why does it why why do white people movies suck? Uh, <laughs> it's a different panel. No, that's, a, no, sorry. that's that's later. Uh, no, it's just I, I can't because we're 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 a divided nation and we're hung up on it. And for some reason there are, there's forces out there that wants to keep us divided. And uh now, there you go. So. Well, and, and on that, Alan, on that, Alan, um, there's also a fictional figure that used this very strategy, this very same strategy. He took all the kingdoms of Mongo and he had them fighting amongst each other to, to basically deflect attention away from the real threat, which was Ming the Ur Merciless. <laughs> or Ing the Merciless. <laughs> uh, Dante, reasons, reasons that uh, modern franchises are done. Okay, you want me to get into this, huh? Yeah. 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 All right. Time. It's time to be going now. <laughs> Look, man, at the end of the day, corporations have always been divorced. So, no, really. So even the, the franchises that we loved, it's not like corporations have changed. They've always been the same. They're, they're always after profit, which is fine, right? As long as you're making a good product. The problem is now, though, is politics have gotten into filmmaking. And not just filmmaking, but just every aspect of the entertainment business. You know, music, <laughs> I mean, not just uh, movies. Um, the problem is we're trying, we're trying, we're trying to make up, right, for I don't know how many years of entertainment within the last couple of years. And what I mean by that is, yeah, growing up, you know, as a young black kid, sure, would I love to see more black superheroes? Absolutely. Uh, does that mean I couldn't identify with Peter Parker because I was black? Absolutely not. Does it mean I couldn't identify with Steve Rogers because I'm black? Absolutely not. So I love those characters. You know, they were not black. You know, and I get the need or want for more diversity now. And, and to be honest with you, with as many streaming services as there are now and, and outlets, there should be more diverse filmmaking and storytelling. But it shouldn't be at the cost of quality and storytelling. It, 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 diversity shouldn't be the reason why someone goes to watch a, I watch my language, <laughs> goes to watch a movie or a TV show. You get what I'm saying? But here the problem is, is that someone convinced these, these studios that, hey, it's okay to lose a bunch of money 
as long as you keep preaching the right message. Right? So I say even more than corporatism, the message is the reason, the main reason why everything is failing right now. Because they keep trying to push something that isn't organic. It's not organic. Making a, a movie or a TV show with diverse people is very organic. That's fine. But when you're pointing out that those people are diverse, <laughs> then it's no longer organic. It's just a message you're trying to preach. And people are tired of it. The box office is showing us that we're tired of it. Will now will, will, will the corporate will the will the studio learn their lessons? Probably not. Probably not. But again, th th this is the problem with the modern day franchise. <laughs> Yes, the, the message is the foundation of its failure, uh, and there are many. Things were pretty good 10 years ago. Pretty good movies, we were getting some pretty good TV shows, comic books were pretty good, and now everything is crap. Like, literally, everything is crap to where we get a $15 million, possibly, uh, Godzilla movie from Japan, and it blows everybody away in its simplicity. It tells a human story, as it's been brought up, and it makes Godzilla a monster. It's pretty basic. Great redemption arc in it, you're right. Freaking love that movie, can't wait to see it again. Um, and then you contrast that with, uh, you know, the South Park special came out. And I, I think that was, that was a fixed point in pop culture, to use a Doctor Who reference. That changed everything because following that, we got the Marvels, and they did the Madam Web trailer, and then Doctor Who came out in succession, and it was literally Every single one of those was put a chick in her make her, make her gay in life. Um, and, uh, and the whole point of that special was to make fun of us. Absolutely to make fun of us with Kathleen Kennedy being under the bed. But it was also to make fun of the corporations and pandering. The word pandering. Which it is. It's so unnatural. And the, the fact of the matter is they don't mean any of it. You know, uh, another fixed point in pop culture was two days ago. When uh, Elon Musk basically told all his advertisers to go yeah. say it, go fuck themselves. And it was my favorite quote in internet history, and I watch it on the loop now. And, uh, and, and it makes me happy uh, because we need to normalize CEOs doing that. They need to be in competition. But more importantly, what he said later was these corporations are doing evil. They are commit. They are doing very evil things behind the scenes, and these virtue signals. Virtue signaling is just to obfuscate everything, is to cloud everything from the evil that they're actually doing. I don't have anything against corporations. I love capitalism, but I kind of like the mom and pop stuff. I like it when a studio had some weird studio head who would do a bunch of coke, make some rational decisions, <laughs> and we get some good movies. But, um, <laughs> sure, but uh, what's happening now is the politics. They have chosen a side. You know, Bob Iger getting called out, uh, and then his, his interview, we covered it on Friday Night Tights uh, in detail, and it was, I thought it exposed him completely. I thought it shows why Disney is failing right now, and Hollywood overall is now a damaged brand because they bought so hard into this corporate, streaming, Silicon Valley structure, and now they're owned by Silicon Valley, and they're going to have to take Silicon Valley's values, and uh, this is a show I mentioned quite a bit on Friday Night Tights, and you really need to watch it. Silicon Valley. Yeah, it's one of the yeah. best shows they ever made. Ever made. It's it's Idiocracy, the series. It's made by Mike Judge. Well, it is it is an amazing show. Uh, so I, I recommend that. And that will give you perspective on what's going on right now. It actually is is very applicable. Um, but how do we defeat the message? If you told me ten years ago, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago that I would not only hate Star Wars and Marvel, but I'd be mocking it. As a nerd, I'd call you crazy, but here we are. Is it our fault? Is it the fans' fault? Because that's what they try to tell you. Is it your fault? We've, uh, we're the ones who've changed, although we've loved this stuff forever. They've taken you for granted. And they just think, you know, and we need, here's, in closing, there's a word we need to strike. If you want to strike a word, uh, consumer. I freaking hate that word. You're not a consumer. You're a human. You're a customer. You work hard for your money. And you enjoy this stuff. Uh, and no, they just think you're some kind of endless trough, you know. Uh, so uh, reject that, if anything, and reject modernity.
okay, it works. All right, to follow up that, one thing that I will say, which I found is very, very appalling, is the fact that people that are making movies aren't smart. <laughs> and, well, <laughs> let me get to the point where we all know, but it was that meme that came around where it's like, name 10 books. And I was like, why is that a meme? And then I realized, oh, it's because the people that are writing movies, they can't name 10 books that's not Twilight, Harry Potter, or Game of Thrones. And then they don't even know the names of the books in the series, which is extremely alarming. So if you go back in time, well, there's a reason why I'm that Star Wars girl. I'm wearing a Star Trek uniform. Uh, I completely lost hope in Star Wars, which I you know, still have hope in Star Trek. But if you want to do political commentary, there is a way to do it and to do it right. And also to make it entertaining for people that might not agree with your ideology. And so if you go back to the books, there's a book called Animal Farm, which these people that are making movies haven't read, which is unfortunate. And that's political commentary, but it's done in an entertaining way. You don't have to agree with the messaging behind it, but it's still done intelligently. And so people that wrote stuff like Star Trek, Doctor Who, Star Wars, they went through hell. They grew up with parents that were born and lived through the Great Depression. They lived through World War II. So they had actual life experiences. Whereas people making movies and TV shows now, their life experience is that they got a tweet that went viral. <laughs> they got misgendered. Somebody said the wrong pronouns. I'm sorry, but that's not life experience. And so somebody where that is their resume, they shouldn't be writing movies because they don't even understand the world that they're living in. And it drives me crazy when I see people, did you guys see the clip that was going viral of the trill from the new Star Trek Discovery? Being like something about getting a surgery. Yes. And it's like, okay, first off, you've never seen Star Trek if that person qualified to become a trill host because you have to go through rigorous training and mental <laughs> tests to even get to be considered for a host for symbio. But if you have a gender dysphoria, there's no way in hell you would qualify out of the entire population of Trill to be the host for a symbiote. So why is somebody, which in the Star Trek universe, you can get your gender switched or you can get any kind of surgery you want. You can become a freaking Klingon if you want to. So the fact that that's their hot take for the episode, it just shows that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And they don't know what they're writing for. And it's absolutely infuriating to me, and it's like, that's your job. You're going to pay millions of dollars to write this show or this movie, and you didn't take the time to, like, do your homework. And so that, I think, is one of the biggest problems is we, the people that are making shit are stupid. And so when somebody points out, hey, you're fucking retarded, um, they're like, no, it's you, and they respond like a child. <laughs> so it, I think that that's one of the biggest problems. Your turn. <laughs> Uh, so I come from it from a little bit different side of making stuff. I would say though to to jump off what you said, it, there are it's very illiterate in terms of people don't read. I think of uh, Donald Westlake, the books of, or Eleanor Leonard, or those type of authors that we um, you know Rum Punch. Or, uh, I'm thinking of um, uh, you know a lot of uh, authors that were the basis for films. I also think there's an issue with. The quadrants, right? So they're trying to hit all four quadrants when they make a movie. They spend three hundred million dollars on what Miss Marvels or whatever it was, um, as opposed to Godzilla, which was fifteen million. So they have to get a guarantee when they go out, good up to bat. And the problem is, kids today they play video games. They don't watch movies, you know. So they were trying to get a female crowd was the next big thing, but they didn't realize females love Indiana Jones as much as. Yeah. Guys do. Yep. You know, you don't have to change it. It's funny, I was recently on a, a panel of diversity directors at DGA, and all those directors were like, just because I'm Hispanic or I'm Asian, why do I have to just do an Asian story? I want to direct a regular movie, and it doesn't even have to have an all Asian cast. Like, there's pushback on that level, too. When I go up for jobs, behind my name, it says BIPOC director. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like I have a disease. So, <laughs> I, I just want to make a cool shit topic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I think this whole left and right thing, I, I hear where you're coming from. To me, it's always been about classism. It's always been, I think about Close Encounters. Neary, 
his job, he's, a, he's the guy that goes out and fixes when the power lines are down. You know, when it's the abyss, there are a bunch of, and aliens, there are a bunch of mechanics on a ship. You know, Astro, uh, what's it, Armageddon? They're, they're a bunch of guys that are oil uh, riggers, right? Oil oil riggers. And for some reason, now all these movies are people who are entrepreneurs. They've already made their millions. Those are the people I can't relate to. You know, my dad was a teacher. I can relate to the teacher who lives an ordinary life that has an extraordinary experience. And that seems to be the movies that aren't being made today. I think Godzilla is great because you have someone who is a failed, I mean, spoiler alert, failed kamikaze pilot, right? He brings shame to his family. He wants to kill himself. You've thrown everything and the kitchen sink at this character. And Pixar used to do that too. Right, ordinary people in extraordinary lives. Yeah. So I think getting back to that that sort of base, basics of storytelling would be really great. And I think it's also characters that we can relate to, not in terms of color, not in terms of gender, but in terms of just their life experience. We all go to work nine to five. Wouldn't it be great to remember Tron? You go and you play video games, and then all of a sudden you got sucked into the video. I mean, those are great stories that I don't see anymore. So. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, well we, uh, we only have about 20 minutes left. Is my, is my mic okay? It's okay. I just, we only have about 20 minutes left for this panel, unfortunately. Um, I'd like to open it up for questions. So if you have a question, come on over here and I'll hand you my microphone so everyone can hear it. Um, but I want to go off uh, before, so just come right over here. Right. Well, there you go. All right, great. All right. Um, it's okay. You have a question. No, no, no. Um, it's one, yeah, one, right, one. right here, right here. Into the mic. Question. Well, I don't, is it working? Yeah, it's working. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Yeah. I don't know the next time I'll see you guys live. I just want to thank you guys because you guys, you guys are the real deal. Yeah. 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 Question right here. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Um, you know, like with all these friends, you know, you have staples like Marvel, DC. Disney and all that. They're, I mean, to me, they're they're dead. And is it worth still sticking around with these brands in the future when you have things like anime, manga that are just completely dominating every medium out there? Like, I mean, it's like my name's Jed, and I have to sell people. Oh, Jed, like Jedi. Even that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> 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 so, so, like, I mean, how do we, like, should we just completely abandon these? Properties. I mean, to me, I I don't see any like any stock left in that. So, what do you guys think? That's a, that's a great question. I would say this: I reward anything that I love with my attention and money. Yep. And I'm not like I am familiar with a lot of anime, but I wouldn't call myself uh, an anime fan. But I saw One Piece, and that show blew my mind. Yep. One Piece. Um, and, and I'm not, never heard of it. I like pirates. I like characters that are relatable. And that first episode sucked me in, binged the whole thing in a day. I believe in the binge battle sometimes. Um, but uh, yeah, does anyone else care to address that? <laughs> Quickly. Not the binge one. We're not going to get into that. No, uh, never tell you what to do with your own money. But uh, do not reward uh, companies that do not like you and actively uh, are, are attacking you. Uh, again, the access media, when they do those fan attack articles, um, I have heard specifically in two cases from Amazon and Disney that those come from Amazon and Disney. Okay, so like that's that's not a joke. I wouldn't be saying it up here if it, if it wasn't true. Uh, I've had multiple confirmations of this that this is part of the marketing strategy to go against the paying customer. Does that make any sense? No, at all. But you know, you have an easy decision to make. All right, I'll just go follow something I like. Uh, Marvel had huge brand loyalty, so did Disney. Uh, and I saw it all the time at the comic shop. You know, it's, it's people were just obligatory, obligatory buying. I was doing it as a collector. I'd buy comics that I'm never gonna read that. I just wanted to have the whole set. You know, uh, we don't need to do that. You have so many better options now, and that's why manga is kicking the American comic book industry's ass right now because they should, they earned it. They, they're telling better stories. So, yeah, my two favorite things this year are from Japanese properties. Godzilla Minus One is my favorite movie. 
One Piece is my favorite TV show this year. So good for that, man. And also, just to piggyback off of Gary, uh, reward people who are doing it right. Yeah. You know, the independent guys who are, who are making good shit, reward those people. You know, uh, a great example for me is a lot of you guys know Eric July of the Riververse, right? Yeah. I mean, there you go. You know, this is a guy who loved comics his whole life, you know, hated the way the direction was going, started his own comic company, and he's killing it, you know, and, and rightfully so. He deserves to be rewarded for that. So if you guys know of any independents who are, you know, putting out good shit, give them your money. Stop giving it to uh, corporations like Disney and more. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of money out there for us. Uh, we all struggle to get that money. And you should give it to people who actually like you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 More questions. We have a line here for questions. So we'll, we'll keep it going rapid fire right here. I'll make it quick. So uh, The Boys, right? Everyone loves The Boys? Amazon? Yeah. Yep. Better than, better than the comic, I say. No. Mm. no. Why is that? That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>, it's <laughs> another discussion. <laughs> um, all right, so why is that show so good? That's the question for the panel and everybody else. Why is that show so good? Why can't Marvel be that good? Homelander. Why is really good? Why, why can't One answer, Homelander. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it so good? Yeah. Uh, anyone else want to address it? Uh, I mean, I think that's fearlessness. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably not the person to address it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think, <laughs> but, but I think, I think <laughs> both of us really spoke of that, that where you're you're able to uh, pick at each side, and uh, you're not afraid of, of telling stories you want to tell, and that's that's what I'm drawn to. I also think people like the boys because it's uh, the adult Marvel or the anti Marvel. Right, so we went through this era of this era where I don't know that we'll ever see it again. That decade-long build-up to Endgame, we will never see it. Nope. Be happy you were here to see that incredible. I think it was a lot of it's a lot of it was luck too, some of it. But um, and I think the boys was kind of a reaction to Marvel, which is why I think it's popular. But um, uh, let's keep going with the questions. You guys mentioned One Piece and Godzilla as uh, two franchises from Japan that I guess could, you could say has been a reinvention of itself. Has there been any American franchises, not just recent, but from the past like 50 or 60 years or so, that you would say has done an excellent job of reinvention? Two that come to my mind is, you know, when they did the transition from Sean Connery to Roger Moore to James Bond, or when they did the Battlestar Galactica uh, remake back in the early 2000s, which I'm pretty sure would be able to be made today. Yeah, yeah, those, yeah, those are the two, and that's those it. Are the two. <laughs> <laughs> a recent example for Card Season 3 was an example. Like, yeah, Card Season yeah. 3 was a good start. And I think Argyle is, if you've heard the story by Matthew Vaughn, who was supposed to do the James Bond franchise, Casino Royale, and he's the one that suggested Daniel Craig be the next James Bond. They didn't hire him, but they took his suggestion. He said, screw the studios, I'm going to make my own IP, which oh, yeah. is Argyle, was the beginning, like five or six films. Yeah. Another uh, another good example is Doctor Who. You know, uh, everyone thought the franchise was dead after Paul McGann. And it, it came back stronger than ever. And it was great for many, many years now until uh, uh, Capaldi, for me, anyway. I love Capaldi, my favorite doctor. Uh, and I think that's after he left, that's when the franchise died again. <laughs> All right, another question. Uh, yeah, so I, I feel just that I know. Always talk about basically how everything is bad. Whether I'm curious what you guys want to, uh, well, what you guys are looking forward to in the next year that you actually want. We just saw the House of the Dragon trailer. Yeah, and it looks freaking amazing. It was House, yeah, amazing. We just watched it. Um, I'd say for me, Dune Part Two because yeah, yeah. I'm a Dune fan from when I was a teenager and read the first book, blew my mind, and uh, I want to see the. Last half of that book done correctly. So we shall see in March, March 1st, coming to theaters. Um, anyone else have a Well, we're trying to get 200,000, so Echo is coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I would say uh, Furiosa. I know it, it's a little, seems a little more CGI with uh, George Miller, but I'm, I'm looking forward to some more Mad Max. I like to see Mad Max. Yes. Yeah. 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 No Gibson in the Mad Max movie, yeah. I can put a lot of it. I yeah. So the question is, uh, 
looking forward to next year. Uh, there's an all Spanish production uh, that's going to debut at the end of January at Amazon of Zorro. Cast looks great. International cast it looks fantastic. Filmed in Spain. The look and feel. I mean, that's what you want in the, in the Zorro. You know what I mean? Zorro. Netflix's Zorro well, starring Ryan Gosling. It's a, it's a Latin. <laughs> but it should be in California. Well, yeah. yeah. Zorro's California. <laughs> Listen. I'll take it. Give me some money. If it's not in Tony, though, it doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> first of all, Tony, I love you, Tony, but you were like that meme with the guy and the girl, and the guy's looking back, and it's, like, it's always like anything that's Latino. It's just, like all about you. <laughs> You're that meme, like, oh, okay. I love you. Right. Hold on. I didn't get an answer. Thanks for the the, the racial uh, modesty. <laughs> <laughs> All of you guys and say anything yeah. else. I thought I'd just bring it up since the channel's I'm as, as, long as, long as, <laughs> as long as there's an Asian doing his laundry, I'm, I'll be out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gordon, just ask me to come on to publicly. Uh, a lot of people are just what is going on here? Oh, 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 oh. All right, I'm looking forward to Doom 2. How about that? Hey. All right. Oh, we're going in. Thank you. Sorry. No, sorry. That was okay. Hold on. <laughs> Henry has two movies coming out next year, so I'm super excited. He's got Argyle. <laughs> and hopefully it gets me the Highlander. My body is ready. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, my question is, I think the uh, guy's a little bit of going. And the only reason I like it because, besides the great film, I found out it cost $15 million to make. Uh, what I'm wondering is, how, what's going on with all these movies that have like, been costing $200, $300 million? Indiana Jones failed. Uh, Marvel's failed. All these films are failing. Is there a way we can get these films to come down in price? Make films at least, maybe not $15 million, maybe like $50 million or $75 million. What's going on? Well, the problem with movies that have such high budgets is it makes studios even more risk-averse, meaning the higher the budget, usually the lamer the thing turns out to be, unfortunately. And in the case of uh, what you mentioned, you know, Marvel, um, uh, Indiana Lucas Jones, Jones. And yeah, Disney, there is what they call uh, middle management bloat. Disney is about as effective as the U.S. government when it comes to allocating capital. And, and, and getting things done. Other countries, it's not as much of a problem. You mentioned the movie RRR, probably my favorite movie from last year. And that movie was made for like 20 million or some crazy, crazy uh, figure that was so cheap. 15 million, we heard for Godzilla, it might be, even if it's 35 million, that's such an accomplishment. Uh, we, we, it's, it's too expensive. It, they made it too expensive. Anyone I want to address that? Uh, Bob Iger said it was COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't, yeah, Bob Iger said there wasn't enough executives on set to oversee the uh, diverse female director. Oh, <laughs> because, because the more executives you have, the lower the price will go. The price will go up. <laughs> the quality will go up with more executives. That's what Bob Iger said. So it has to be real, right? And what, whatever you think about the creator, I think the way they made it is a game changer. So I would, I would encourage you to look at and see how they made it, which was using prosumer cameras. Um, buying like five of them for the cost of like a couple of Lexus and um, actually going out and running and gunning it. It's how um, Gareth Edwards did his first film. Uh, I believe it's called Monsters. Monsters yeah. Yeah, yeah, Monsters. So I think that I know a lot of guys in the industry are looking to that, wanting to make their own films and, and using that as an example of how you can make a big budgeted looking sci fi film. It's oh, easier now than ever. Yeah, than it's, it's ever been. You're going to have access to so much stuff. I'm going to get so popular. Yeah, I was gonna, box. AI is going to help so many independent people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say that almost every genre is now in the hands of, of indie filmmakers. And so if you have you know, a lot of off-the-shelf stuff, I think the only genre that indie filmmakers can't do is action. And that's because of insurance <laughs> stunts and things like that. So just, yeah, run and gun it. Yeah, yeah, because all the go bro, I'll totally pay for that broken arm. Yeah, exactly. That's how wrestling does it, so. Yeah, right. We probably got time for three more questions, so let's go for it. All right, I'll try to make it quick because I could actually talk like three hours about everything you guys just said right now. But just with the message and everything in Hollywood, I always felt like it's 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 more entertainment as part of that. I feel like we should, I love what you guys do. Support independent and stuff like that because 
that's what I'm teaching my daughter. Go watch these old movies. Go read some books before they, you know, the school starts taking the good ones out. The ones that actually make you think, make you question. Because now I just feel like, hey, you know what? It's not just entertainment. You know, it's just the schools. If you actually see every all that, this is about our new generation and new generation of storytelling. The reason the movies suck, the writing sucks now. Look at our university. Look at the graduates graduating today, getting a message in their head. They have no experience. You know, I tell my daughter, hey, you know what? Go play outside. You know, <laughs> go play outside. I know right now is that's kind of like taboo. It's like, oh, <laughs> that's abuse telling her to go out play outside. I know. But here's the question. Leave it all out. Here's the question. Here's the question. Now, um, like I said, I love that you guys are putting this message. Is there going to be maybe because down the line, I don't see this getting better unless you're independent, of course, but pushing the younger generation, hey, you know what? There's great movies out there, hey, there's great books out there. Start doing those, you know? I, I think that's the job of the parent. Build it and they will come. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, like, uh, you know, my kid just discovered Venture Brothers. He <laughs> kind of did it on his own. It's one of the proudest moments I've ever had. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you kids aren't stupid. Uh, they really hate it when these corporations like dumpstead, like, here's the children's version. Mm -hmm. uh, or even worse, with what they did with the last Doctor Who special, which was specifically geared towards kids. They can figure this stuff out. They're not dumb. So uh, I have hope. Uh, what's going to happen is it's going to be decentralized. Once it's decentralized, which I am hoping for like crazy, uh, they're going to find stuff on their own and then make stuff on their own. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, and, you know, put it up on YouTube and uh, one of those kids will take off and maybe that's the next George Lucas. You know, hopefully. So, so these are it's already happening. It's been happening, right? As far as in, in, in the realm that I that I do, first I want to say also subscribe and follow follow Film Friend because all they do is is spotlight independent film and interviews. So there's a wealth of information just there for for your daughter to, to check out. All you know in regards to like what who I who I spotlight. You know these directors are going out there and getting. Their movies funded on their own. They're being very creative. It's just it, it, that's what we got to reward. That's what we got to follow and find out how they did it. Because just like what Gary said, it's 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 the easiest now it's ever been to make films as far as the technology. It's, it's affordable, and, and you know, films will be do do a good looking film on the iPad or on your iPhone. Mm -hmm. They just still have to be good. I mean, they have to be good. That's important. <laughs> but we'll get there. <laughs> but again, Hollywood doesn't love you. And Marvel's wish, good job. Not going to see it. <laughs> okay, right here. Okay. Uh, can Star Trek survive after that musical episode? No. <laughs> no. Anna? I didn't watch it. <laughs> Again, good job. Don't watch this. <laughs> we have time for one last question because we're supposed to wrap up. Okay, right here. Hey, uh, so do any of you uh, think like lots of the actors now are getting handicapped by writers and directors like Al, your guy, Henry Tavel, got ruined from The Witcher to The Veg, and Ortega on Wednesday. Do you think a lot more of them are getting uh, handicapped, like they're not able to do anything because they're like, do it this way and that's it? I think any actor right now or actress with independent thought is going to get slapped. And uh, I'll go so further, if you're not locked up, then yeah, your career is done. So I, I believe half of the artists out there, half of the actors and actresses who are in these weird roles uh, by these terrible writers, probably don't even agree with it, but they're not going to speak up because that would be the end of their career, and they know that. So it, it, it's easy to, to look at these actors and actresses and, and, and label them as, you know, woke and all these other things, but sometimes you got to eat, and sometimes you've got to just, you know, take it on the chin. And do a movie that you don't want to do, you know, even if it's a bullshit message. All right. Well, I think um, th there's a certain amount of that that's true. You got to eat. But uh, there's a difference between, like, we have start a movie that has a bullshit message. Okay, that, that feeds the kids. And then going out and saying it. 
Oh yeah, no, very different. No, this, those are yeah. two different things. Yeah, and I would <laughs> never want to work anywhere where I had to sacrifice my kids. Right, I would just quit. Uh, but yes, I think that most of them are hamstrung, especially Henry. Her boy Henry. I think I think his his process. I think he was born twenty years too late. His process would have worked. Yeah, uh, Donner worked with Marlon Brando, who was a psychopath. Marlon Brando would have been homeless if he wasn't an actor. He was crazy. Uh, but there's a certain amount of neurosis that goes with being an actor. But you can put up with it, and you can't do it now. And Henry believes in lore, wants to get stuff right. He's a professional, and that doesn't fly in corporate HR Hollywood anymore. And now he's vilified. This guy should be starring. He should be the highest paid actor out there. He should yeah. be starring in everything. He, he should, should be, be Superman. Superman. He should be Superman. Yes. Um, but uh, he's not. And that's because the right, they are being hamstrung. Most of the actors, I think, are, they just want to go and do their art. I think most of them do. Tom, Tom Cruise is a great example of that, also. Well, then you have Kurt Russell, who it's like he's oh. offered the bullshit popcorn movie or the Oscar movie. When you have those two, his answer was do both. And I don't know anything about Kurt Russell's politics or his personal opinions because, well, I don't know. I don't look it up. Yeah. But, and honestly, I don't care. He makes good movies. I like Kurt Russell movies. But as far as Henry, he got screwed over early on. He got a really bad manager, and she got a huge cut of all of his profits. And so that's why he couldn't even have a space in Shazam because basically she would get a giant paycheck. And I mean, it sucks that he's out of it now. So hopefully things start looking out for him. Rock's ex wife, Danny Garcia, yeah. she's a cunt. <laughs> I so, um, so what's a general take on really quick, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, 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 the writers, when God bless the writers, I mean, they were on strike, but they did vilify her on the strike. Yes, they line, did. Which, uh, it's like, Look, she took she took charge of of something she believed in, which was the character Wednesday, working with Tim Burton. And if you paid attention to her interviews, it was always about that first, always about the lore, and then the relationships with the older people that played it. Man, she knew Wednesday to a T. And then, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. There's going to be some you know some background as far as her ethnicity. That's cool. But you know, there's not a lot of people like her. And you know that's a, and the latest thing that she did. They said that you know she uh, she quit she, she quit screen because of, of a, a scheduling conflict. So listen, that was that was that was reported months ago. But as soon as her, her friend got fired for her beliefs and speaking up, she's like, you know what, I'm out too. So you know it, there, there's not a lot of, not a lot of, uh, of of those base actors that are out there that are putting up. The, you got to uh, that are that are speaking the minds, but they're they are out there. So we have to support Jenna. Uh, I just want to say, unfortunately, we got to wrap it up here. We have another panel, uh, three thirty. So indie filmmakers survival guide, same room tomorrow. Another panel at two thirty p.m. is why ninety nine percent of movies today are garbage. I want to thank everybody here on the panel. Thank you. Thank you.